To preserve liberty, it is essential that the whole body of people always possess arms and be taught alike, especially when young, how to use them. Richard Henry Lee was born January 20th, 1732, at Stratford Hall, the family seat in Westmoreland County, Virginia. His father, grandfather, and his four brothers all served as military officers, diplomats, and legislators. He received his elementary instruction from private tutors and completed his education at Wakefield Academy in England. Having finished his studies in 1751, he spent a few months in travel, then returned to Virginia in 1752. On December 3, 1757, he married Annie Allett, daughter of William Allett of Westmoreland County. His public service began in 1757 when he became a justice of the peace in his county, and in 1758, he entered the House of Burgesses. His part in the activities of the House was one of increasing importance until he had attained a position of influence in its councils as a defender of colonial rights. He is said to have led a mob of gentlemen to confront the appointed collector of stamps and compel him to promise not to serve in his official capacity. Then, in February 1768, he drew the citizens of his own county into an association, buying themselves to import no British goods until the Stamp Act should be repealed. In December 1768, his wife died, and in the following year, he married Miss Annie Pickard widow of Thomas Pickard and daughter of Cole Thomas Gaskin during the relatively quiet period between 1768 and 1773. Lee remained involved in politics. He was appointed delegate to the Continental Congress in 1775 and was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence in 1776. He served next in the Virginia House of Delegates in 1777, 1780, and 1785. When the Constitution was laid before Congress, Lee led the opposition to it. His chief concern was that the Convention, called only to amend the Articles of Confederation, had exceeded its power. He also worried that the Constitution lacked a Bill of Rights, that it was a consolidated rather than a federal government, and therefore opened the way to despotism, and that the lower house was not sufficiently democratic. He insisted upon amendments before adoption. These arguments were put forth in a series of letters of a federal farmer, which became a textbook for the opposition during the ratification process. Though he supported the 1787 Federal Convention in Philadelphia, he worried that the new constitution had too much power over the state and lacked a Bill of Rights. Lee served in the Virginia House of Delegates during the War for Independence, but was frequently absent due to ill health. At war's end in 1783, he served in Congress under the Articles of Confederation and was anonymously elected president of the Congress. Richard Henry Lee aided in lighting the torch of American freedom and kept it burning for his nation from a farmer to a politician to a congressman to a statesman to a patriot to a senator. Richard Henry Lee performed a very important role in American history. He died on June 19, 1794 at the age of 62. It must never be forgotten that the liberties of the people are not so safe under the gracious manner of government as by the limitation of power. That these colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states. That they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. To say that a bad government must be established for fear of anarchy is really saying that we should kill ourselves for fear of dying. Richard Henry Lee played an important role of lighting the torch for American freedom. He stopped British goods from being imported unless the Stamp Act was repealed. 
and before our constitution was adopted, he insisted on a Bill of Rights.